Well, the key question, of course, is whether the parties, especially the coalition partners in Lesotho, mean business and uh, what is, is being started here is indeed going to last. And joining me now is a member of that coalition, the Deputy Prime Minister of Lesotho. Deputy Prime Minister, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much, sir. Is it for real this time around? Oh, we definitely, we think we have reached a point of no return. The process is irreversible. The parliament is going to open tomorrow and we are very excited about that. If I must take, take you a step back, what withheld, this, another, what prevented um, the process uh, that is in motion now from taking place a lot earlier? Uh, on that one, really, you are asking a wrong person about this because, you know, uh, I have been in the forefront of, you know, calling for uh, the intervention from SADC and uh, South Africa to ensure that uh, the parliament is opened. So uh, I was not the one who was responsible for opening. I was, uh, I am part of the coalition. You remember at first we made an agreement uh, which uh, later was, uh, came to be known as Namibia Declaration. On that declaration there were some commitments that we made. On behalf of my party there was a commitment I made and I definitely delivered on part of uh, my commitment. But uh, on the other side uh, the Prime Minister was unable to, 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 to meet or to, uh, uh, to, to actually uh, the commitment that he made to, 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 to keep his side of the bargain. And we uh, subsequently we had a Pretoria a declaration and in the same manner that declaration was not honored, not by myself. And eventually we had this Maseru facilita uh, facilitation declaration. But now all the processes have been put in place, the processes are in motion and really uh, now, as I have indicated, the process has reached an irreversible uh, point and the parliament is opening tomorrow. Before I proceed, uh, Deputy Prime Minister, just a quick one. Is it a question of real issues that were difficult to resolve or was it a question of personalities just plainly or simply refusing to do the right thing? I'm not sure really as I'm saying that on my part we have delivered on the part of the bargain. So what were those reasons which prevented the, the, the Prime Minister to deliver on his part really uh, I don't know what prevented him uh, from doing that but as you are aware uh, whatever reason one can put forward but uh, suspending parliament is tantamount to suspending democracy and I think uh, the parties as political parties we are existing because we are living in a democratic country and immediately if you, you shut down parliament, you suspend parliament, definitely you're suspending democracy. So as a politician, as a democrat, I don't see anything really that can be equated to, you know, that can be a reason enough to stop anybody from, uh, you know, uh, opening parliament and giving people uh, the right uh, to participate in, in, in democracy. You know, I, I really, I don't know the reason, but I'm saying whatever reason one can come up with, that reason would not be enough, really, to justify the suspension of parliament and not implementing the decisions which were made, the declarations uh, in time, as it happened in this case. Now, we know that um, you've all agreed to an early election in February next year or thereabouts. But you've also, you, all of you have committed to a, a road map. Now, how confident are you that between now and uh, 
uh, December or whenever Parliament uh, will get suspended in preparation uh, for the election. How confident are you that there will be constructive discussions, that um, everyone will honour their part of the bargain and uh, you, all of you will be able to deliver on that election in February? You know, I can only speak for uh, the party that I'm leading, that is the Soto Congress for Democracy. On our part, I know that we are committed to the process and we will do whatever it takes to ensure that uh, what is expected of us, we do in order to enable the process and the elections to be a success. So on our part, definitely, we are, we are very much opti optimistic and we will do whatever it takes, as I have indicated. But on the other side, you know, I'm not sure really how committed are other colleagues. From your part, um, speaking for your party, how prepared are you, um, whatever the outcome of uh, 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 February's election, how prepared are you to set your differences aside and be able to embrace one another, irrespective of who will have won um, come February, but put the interests of Lesotho, of Basotho first. Uh, you have a country that has got an unemployment rate uh, that's hovering around 45%. Many of those people, young people, uh, who are really dependent on you to show leadership. How prepared are you, uh, irrespective of the outcome, to set your differences aside and make sure that uh, even beyond that election, you will be able to embrace one, an to embrace one another as political party leaders and as parties and put the interests of Lesotho first. No, thank you very much. Really, uh, my party has always you know, put the, the interests of the people first. That is why immediately when uh, parliament was suspended, we said, no, we cannot be party to that. One would have expected that we will continue business as usual and say that, no, because we are part of the coalition, uh, we, you know, we, we are ministers, so we can continue even under this climate. But because we were putting uh, the country first, and we know that uh, the formula all over the world now, everybody is embracing democracy. And without a democracy, you cannot say that the country really you are putting the, 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 the interests of the, of the people if you are uh, shutting their, their mouths and their voices. So from that very onset, I can say that we on our part strongly believe that what we have done up to so far was in the best interest of the country and will definitely continue to rule that even after the elections. David Prime Minister, lastly and very, very briefly, I cannot resist this. With the benefit of hindsight, should you have joined the coalition? I think here it was not a question of choice. It was a question of the people, Basoto. But Basoto had spoken in that way that there is no party which was uh, given a mandate to govern alone. And I think we were forced by the electorate and we did the right thing. And uh, one, we are going for the elections now. If they are repeating it, clearly, we will accept that. But I think we have learned a lesson because maybe we, are, we were not prepared for this. That is why we need to be now looking into reforming uh, some of the looking into uh, our constitution and better positioning parliament to be able to uh, to uh, actually respond to that new dispensation, the, the, the politics of, of coalition. I think uh, we were uh, ill prepared for this as a country, but I think now we have learned a lesson and going forward. So it's not a question of, uh, I, I, I don't regret that because it was the choice of Basotho. Well, let's hope those lessons were indeed invaluable and um, from now on everyone will uh, put their um, shoulder to the wheel and make sure that the interests of Basutu are paramount and less so the interests of political party leaders and their parties.